Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Black Ink Crew Review Recap Season 5, Episode 2, Teddy's Playhouse. So the episode opens with Donna and the baby mama fighting. Um, Donna, just let this go. Because baby mama and baby daddy situation, they're always going to be having sex. I don't care what nobody say. That's why I don't date people with kids. And um, what else I was going to say? She spent $2,500 on that wedding dress. I don't remember that wedding dress being all that cute. I don't even remember how the wedding dress was for her to spend $2,500 on it. But he, she's not going to do anything but go back and report to Maxwell what happened. Donna, just be happy that you got yourself out of this situation. Because both of them had you looking real stupid out here. You probably was paying all their bills. And she, the baby mama probably just was in agreement that she just going to let him be with you until he make all the money out of you. Then they're going to go back and be back together. That, that's just like that hood ghetto stupid shit. Donna, just be happy you got out of this. Please don't go back to another abusive situation. On a side note, too, Donna look really cute in her confessional with that short hair. And her makeup is really, really nice, too. She look really, really cute in her confessionals in this season. So we back at the 113 shop. Old shit comes home. And he has a new girlfriend. Everybody thinks she's pregnant or whatever. Apparently, he didn't go to rehab like he said he was going last season. Say he was going down south to South Carolina for rehab. Apparently, he went to San Francisco and got another job at a tattoo shop. Like, how did they didn't know this? Like, I'm quite, he didn't post anything on social media. Like, because I know, like, he, they probably didn't know that he was actually, wasn't in rehab. Because when you are in rehab, I don't think they can contact people, like, on the outside. I don't even think, can they get visitors? I don't even think they can get visitors unless it's, like, a doctor or something. But, um, apparently he went to the West Coast and he don't want to go by old shit anymore. He want to go by Richard. And, like, every time they call him old shit, the girl correct them. Be like, oh, his name is Richard. I'm like, girl. <laughs> like, I don't understand how he be pulling these girls. All these baby mamas, no job, drug addiction. He say he's been clean for four months. We'll see how long this lasts because people just don't kick a coke habit from using every day on their own cold turkey like this. So we'll see how this plays out throughout the season. Will he fall off the wagon, guys? We shall, we shall see. Now, this girl seems like she's a positive influence on Richard, but um, what if he breaks up with her? What, well, what if she breaks up with him? Like, who's going to be his support system then? Will he fall off the wagon? Like, because he seems like now every time he talks, he referenced her. Like, what? Well, I forgot what her name is. So and so and so and I, or so and so, so and so thinks. Like, it seemed like it's just all her thinking and maneuvering to try to get him to do better. I think he thinks, I think he's trying to impress her or. I don't really, I, I can't really put my finger on it, but he's always referencing her every time he speaks. And she doesn't want him working at the 113 shop. She want him to go and ask Caesar if he can work at the other shop on 125th, the new shop. And then we have Donna and Skye back at her apartment. Donna said that she wanted to come over there and stay for a bit. And um, Skye really didn't want her to, but she saw how her and down that Donna was that she didn't want to stay at her own place and Donna basically got into like the meat of the abuse and how he used to prey on her and just beat her down he probably was just killing all of her confidence and she just think she just thought that he loved her and she was trying to figure out if he say he loved me like he if he loves me like he says he does then why will he continue to hurt me because that's what abusers do they make you think that it's love that they're beating on you or like one know your every move, but that's not love. That's just control. And um, I'm glad Donna was smart enough to realize it and get out before it got too far. Luckily, he's in jail. I don't remember how long he was in jail for, but luckily he's in jail, so he can't just come looking for her or trying to attack her right now, but he probably can hire the baby mama to do it or somebody else. But um, good for you, Donna. Good for you for recognizing the signs and actually getting out before it was too late and you end up on the ID channel. So Richard finally makes his way over to Caesar's 125th shop and basically asks him for his job back. And Caesar was kind of a taken back. 
And he asked him how rehab was, and he found out he didn't even go to rehab. And that put Caesar even more back. So he Caesar finally agreed to give oh shit what Richard his job back at 113 and see how he goes from there. And um and he'll think about switching him over to 125th. Because Caesar did have a good point. Caesar said, if you really kick your drug habit, you could be around partying and drinking and stuff and not pick up anything, not drink and not do any drugs or anything. Which is a good, that's a good thing that Caesar brought that up. Because if, uh, if you have kicked it, that means you have the, to you not tolerance, you have the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You have the will to not do that. So Richard, he agreed and um, he goes back home and he's telling his, he's cooking his girlfriend ramen noodles. And then he had the nerve to say that they have three roommates living in an apartment in New York. And I'm like, girl, you came all the way. And she said she came all the way from San Francisco because she loved him. No, you came to be on TV. But um, you mean to tell me you've been on this show for five seasons and you have a roommate, three of them, in a cramped apartment, and you're living with your girl. And he basically tells her he doesn't have any money, so this is all that they have to do right now. And she has to work at 113th, and she's really, really mad about that. But I'm thinking, girl, he has to do something for income. He already has three other kids. And then I think they married right now, him and her. But he has three other kids. He didn't get his vasectomy like he said he was going to do. So you could be end up pregnant too. So um, basically that was the end of that. So oh shit, they had, um, he ended up telling Caesar, okay, he's going to accept that job. So he ended up going back to a 113 shop, Teddy's Playhouse. <laughs> then we get loud as sky going over to 125th. Y'all should walk in violin and started playing. <laughs> I, I swear, violin started playing. And um, Sky basically telling sees that she want to be a manager. She want a higher position because she, she feels that she's proven herself. So he's sitting there thinking, and the TV, VH1 is so shady. They playing all the flashbacks with Sky practically acting the fool on this show. And had the nerve to go ask for a management position. But uh, he told her he'll think about it. She basically threw Ted on the bus saying that Ted don't know what he's doing. So um, he told her he'll think about it. And she was okay with that. She said he can go sleep on it. So she ended up going back to 125th because she said they had a party. They was having another party that night. And she invited C's. And C said, okay, he'll think about it. He might go by and check it out. So like later on that day or the next day, they end up having the party at 113. And um, C's didn't come, but he sent Miss Kitty in his place. And old shit is there with Richard. Sorry, I'm going to get used to calling him Richard. Richard is there with his new girlfriend. And basically, he thought he didn't know it was going to be this wild of a party. Um, You've been on Black Ink Crew for five years seasons now y'all always throw wild and crazy parties something crazy is always happening so um sky runs up to him and give him this big hug and they call him oh shit He's, the girl was like oh no it's richard and all of them just dying laughing i was laughing too but um miss kitty walks up in there calling them talk about she heard that they was ratchet and stank and stuff and i'm like girl how you gonna come up in these people place of business another business that caesar's that Caesar owns and try to downplay it and, and downgrade his employees like they're not going to say anything. So the only two people that was getting really hyped was um, Young Bay and a new girl, Tiffany. They were actually like going back and forth with Miss Kitty. Miss Kitty was acting like she was all classy and stuff. But she's in there telling somebody to step up and her and Tiffany started fighting. Like I'm like, Miss Kitty, you're supposed to be classy, but you're in here scrapping with the so-called hood rats. That That's what you claim them. Because earlier in the episode, Dutch is the one was telling her that they was ratchet and hood rats and um, ghetto and stuff. So that's what she took and ran with it without actually meeting the people and see like how they are for, the, for herself. And um, she ended up fighting. She, she got beat up, basically. And like while she was being... While they was breaking them up, it seemed like the Asian girl was 
hitting him in the head too, young babe. She hit her a few times. And somebody else, I couldn't make out who it was, but somebody else was hitting her too. So now Miss Kitty talking about every time she sees Tiffany, she's going to mess her up on site. You know how you always do on these shows. Like, girl, bye. But that was the end of that episode. And um, that was in the episode two, Teddy's Playhouse. This is like it's going to be a really, really good season. I might end up reviewing it every week if it holds my attention. Because I know how I am. Once I start getting bored, I just won't make a video about it. Because I won't have anything to talk about. Um, you can subscribe to my channel. Follow me on social media. I'm going to put all the links down below. Um, Snapchat and Instagram is LethaBeautyXO. Twitter is Danny underscore Griffin. Um, Facebook is Miss Danielle Griffin. And buy my ebook, Football Wags, off of Amazon Kindle for 99 cents. If you have Kindle Unlimited, you can read it for free. You can leave a review. I would love to hear what you like, hear what you think about the book, and you can leave a review on this video too. I would like to hear what you think about the episode. Um, thank you guys for tuning into my channel. Bye.